Welcome back guys to another PvE build for the Waking Flame DLC. Tomorrow the patch will finally get released on PC. The console players have to be a little bit more patient. I am back to my Magicka DK and I used the same rotation like in the previous patch but I swapped Mother Sorrow for Bazaas which gives like 5 to 6k more DPS. After a couple of tries, I managed to get 105k plus DPS. So over 5k more in the last patch, it's probably only because of Barzais. Check out the rotation explanation in the description below. Before the path starts, don't forget to sub my channel. Over 80% are still not subbed. If you enjoy my work, just click on this red juicy button and support me. Now enjoy the pass, afterwards I'll see you with the build showcase. Here we go with the build 
like I said before, I swap Mother Sorrow for Barzaz Mania. It's definitely strong, as you can see, over 5k more DPS than previous patch. As once I said, one Slime Core for extra crit rate, and the Harpooner's Waiting Kill still a Mythic item. If you don't have access to mythic items, use Zahn instead for melee fights. And for range fights, I recommend to use one Slime Core and one Zahn for extra crit rate. On the front bar, Zeroria, still with two daggers. One in charged, just because I have sustain issues on the dummy. In raids, I recommend to use double precise. On the back bar, still the MSA Inferno stuff. Trades, full divines on the body, full bloodthirsty on the jewelry, one charged, one precise. Like I said, in dungeons or raids, double precise, definitely better. Back bar, still infused with the Berserker Glyph. On the front bar, a flame and a poison damage enchant. Alternative, if you don't have Barzais, you can still use Mother Sorrow. Or Medusa, Medusa on the front bar then, with Zeroria on the body. Quick look on the skills, Engulfing Flames, Burning Embers, Molten Whip, our spammable, Degeneration, Inner Light, and Shooting Star, Back bar, Eruption, Unstable Wall of Fire, Barb Trap, you can de-slot Barb Trap for the Mystic Orb, if you use Medusa. Then Scalding Rune, Flames of Oblivion and the Standard of Might. With Flames of Oblivion and Inner Light and Degeneration, we have Major Sorcery and Major Prophecy on both bars, which means we can use the Minor Heroism potions, which gives us Minor Heroism, so one point uh, one ultimate every 1.5 seconds. It's pretty nice. They're expensive though. You can still use the normal spare power potions if you want. But the heroism potions are definitely better. As race, still Khajiit for the extra 12% crit damage and the extra sustain. Dunmore and a high elf are fine too. As Mundestone, the thief for extra crit rate. And as buff food, the ghastly eyeball. In raids, you could even go with the green Max Magica food or the Arteum pickled fish bowl. It's almost the same, to be honest. Quick look on the CPs Fighting Finesse, Backstabber, Deadly Aim, and Mastered Arms. If you can't flank the enemy, like always, D slot Backstabber for Tomaturge. It's kinda sad that we <laughs> use two single target blue CPs here on a full, almost full uh, dot class, but uh, Molten Whip and the Light Attacks are just too strong to not empower them, so it's definitely worth it to use Deadly Aim and Mastered Arms instead of Tamaturge. Red CPs, Rejuvenation, Boundless Vitality, Fortified and Sustained by Suffering. If you don't have sustain issues, like in dungeons or raids, you can swap both region CPs for spirit mastery, for example, or something else like slippery, that kind of stuff. That's it with my Magicka DK PvE build for the next patch. Next one will be a Magicka Warden PvE build. Afterwards, I will probably release some PvP builds with the new sets. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, I wish you all a wonderful day and I see you hopefully in the next video. Ciao!